Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Father Rick Freshett. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a Passionist priest. Maybe you know the Passionists in Pittsburgh. And I'm also a medical doctor. I'll be ordained 32 years the 17th of May, which is just a few days away. And I've spent almost all of my priesthood in foreign service as a missionary in other countries. I worked in Honduras during the years of the uh, revolutions there, the uh, time of President Reagan. I worked in Mexico for a few years, and I've been working in Port-au-Prince in Haiti for 25 years. And I'm really glad to have this chance to talk with you today, especially the graduates of tomorrow. Congratulations to you and your families. And I'm glad to talk with you to be able to give a little bit of witness about the, the real value and the importance of our faith, which hopefully you take out into the world along with your diploma tomorrow, strengthened in so many intellectual abilities and increased knowledge and intelligence, but at the same time, having been so well held up in this culture of Benedictine tradition and Catholic tradition, hopefully you'll be able to carry the important flame of faith into a world which needs it so desperately. When I studied medicine, as we were leaving on the last day, one of our professors said, over these last five years, you've learned about 7,000 new words, most of them with Latin endings. And it doesn't matter if you remember all of them, that, but there is one word that you should forget. Absolutely never let this word cross your lips as a physician. And that word is oops. <laughs> and it was really a way of trying to keep the whole thing simple. The same professor said to us, the sick person who entrusts themselves to your care has only three questions. What's wrong with me? What's going to happen to me? And what can help me, if anything? It's about keeping it simple. And the better we are at our profession, the better we are at our, pro our vocation, the better we are at keeping it simple. In our first reading today, very curious reading, the disciples are concerned because some disciples who were not commissioned to speak said too much to some other communities and gave teachings that were very confusing and turned everybody upside down. And now a new delegation of two official disciples was sent in order to speak to them very plain words. Let's keep it simple, live a good life, stay away from idolatry, follow the virtues and the principles of marriage and everything will be fine. In the gospel, we have the same thing. The gospel reading of today is one of the many readings where our Lord is preparing the apostles and us who are present day apostles for a very difficult work in a very difficult world. And he says, don't call me master, call me your friend, we are friends. Use love to break the chains that keep us apart, the chains that keep so many in bondage. Use love to break the chains so that we may live as friends in the kingdom which God has established unto eternity. Let's keep it simple. Every Thursday, myself and 
about 15 other of my friends on our team, we go to a very terrible place which is heaped with cadavers. And it's a place where the destitute dead are piled because no one can afford to bury them. And we pull them off the piles and we put them into coffins, very simple ones that we make with our own hands out of cardboard. And we make very simple palls with very simple religious images of hope and we put them over the simple coffin. We make rosary beads out of string and we put rosaries in their hands. And then we bring them out to a field outside of town and we bury them in graves that we dig with our own hands in order to bury them with dignity and peace and in the hope of the resurrection on the last day. When we were doing this, and we do it a lot, probably 60 or 70 people every Thursday, that adds up quite a bit, 275, 300 people every month. A couple of weeks ago as we were doing this, when we left, we saw what looked to be another cadaver on the side of the street unattended, and we stopped. But there was movement. It was really a terrible sight. It was an older woman, out of her mind, naked, in the parched sun. Look at my face, you can get an idea of how hot it is down there, and the strength of the sun. She was dry, she was thirsty, she was naked, she was being eaten by one of these flesh-eating bacteria. It was terrible, 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 terrible. We picked her up, we brought her home, we cleaned her, we tended to her wounds, we gave her strong antibiotics. Over the next few weeks, she came fully alert and alive back into a human community joining us, friends, into a human community, improving and taking on her health again. You know, of all the things I've seen, and believe me, I've seen a lot, this particular situation had me upside down for three or four days. It was just so disturbing to see somebody so isolated, abandoned, humiliated, in such suffering, and with a terrible end in, in front of her. And so many cars passing by, so many, so many, so many, passing by, passing by, passing by, unconcerned. And it was like coming up against the gates of hell. It was very disturbing to me. And a few days later, I spoke to a very good friend about it, and I said, I just can't get myself back in balance again. I just can't. I can't sleep. I keep seeing those same things in my mind at night. And my friend said to me, do you remember what we learned in school about our consciousness and what we know? Do you remember we were taught that what we see and what we know it's not just us, the ego, seeing and knowing. But the universe becomes aware of itself by what we see and what we know. It's almost like there are two eyes in our conscious awareness, not just the eye of me, but another one, a very wide eye of reality looking at itself and understanding. And even more than that, our mystics tell us that our consciousness and the deepest parts of ourselves, where we have dreams and in intuitions and inspirations, is a way that God's never closing eye is also watching. And I said, if that's the case, then the universe knows absolutely what hell is, and God's unclosing eye knows absolutely what hell is, because that lady, our sister, 
was in hell. And he said to me, yes, but because your team stopped and because you took her home and tended to her wounds and bound her and took loving care of her, the universe also knows and God's unclosing eye also knows what heaven is because heaven is the refusal of hell and heaven is acting in absolute contradiction to the hell which happens to so many people in our world and on the face of our planet. And the world rejoices at even one who was lost and who has been found again. I've always understood as a missionary, God blessed me with health, God blessed me with strength, God blessed me with two vocations, priesthood and as a physician. And my job is to go into the world and wherever I find that these are useful and helpful towards human dignity and towards salvation, it's my obligation to put them to full service in faith. And this is in fact your obligation from your baptism. And those of you who have been so blessed and so fortunate to be able to study here over these years and graduate at the level of university and college here in the United States, it's your obligation also to go into this difficult world of immense suffering and to bring your intelligence and your heart and your dreams and your visions and put them to work for the kingdom of God. We get battered, we get knocked over, we get turned upside down. It's difficult to go back again sometimes, but the church gives us everything that we need. The word of God from the scriptures, the strength from the sacraments, the good company of each other, the abiding presence of the risen Christ in the heart of anyone who will make room for the risen Christ in their heart. These are great words, the invincibility of love. There is no corner of our world to be left unturned. There is nobody in any difficult situation on earth that cannot be touched by and freed by the power of love. You possess it, I possess it, God blesses us God blesses it in all of us and gives us enormal, enormous power through love. Let's heed the readings of today. Let's keep it simple. We thank God for the blessing and strength and privilege that we have all been given. And we ask God to help us find the best possible way to smash the chains that burden and divide and through the power of love that God has given us to form the world into his likeness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.